Hello everybody, welcome to Susan's Craft Cabin. Thank you for joining me today. And today's project is to make a deco lampshade from a reproduction frame. Art Deco is a period between the 1930s and the 1940s. You might have remembered uh, Scott Fitzgerald's uh, story, The Great Gatsby. A lot of the inspiration for these frames came from that period. They loved geometric shapes and um, it was a very extravagant period. Um, anyway, we're going to make one of these frames and you'll notice that the top is quite flat and then it curves around. But it's a beautiful frame and this is a finished lampshade in the same, which I have lined in black velvet. So I'm going to use this beautiful vintage Japanese silk. It's a silk crepe. It's vintage. I bought it from a kimono market in Japan online. And this silk has been in storage on a bolt. That's a bolt for probably nearly 100 years. It's beautiful silk. You can see it's perfect condition in absolute perfect condition and it is definitely from the deco period so I thought this would be appropriate and I'm going to line the lampshade with a bright orange crushed velvet like so I think that will look beautiful so I've made my template as I show you how to do in the first video and I've cut out eight panels because there are eight panels in this frame so I've cut out on the bias eight panels having done that I stitched all the panels together on the sewing machine so there we have all the panels together on the sewing machine which would be stretched over the frame but before we do that we need to cut out our lining and the best way to cut out a stretch lining and the only way you can really line these shades in this shape properly is with a stretch fabric and I choose to use velvet is to take your velvet and to cut out two pieces on the bias again for your lining two pieces like this doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be pulled and stretched inside anyway Make sure you have an allowance at the bottom and an allowance at the top. So that's one piece and I'll do another one. And what I'm going to do is to put the two pieces together, right sides together, and so stitch along the edging on the sewing machine. So now I'm going to fit this outer layer onto the frame. So I'm going to stretch it and fit it onto the frame. Today I'm using larger pins. I'm finding they're easier, but make sure that you're very careful because it's so easy to prick yourself with these pins. Starting at the top, pinning alternatively like that. So you're going to pin all the way around the top and all around the bottom. and then you're going to stitch it. So I've pinned 
around the top on alternate struts really and I've pinned around the bottom just pulling the fabric onto the bottom of the verticals so that you can and you stretch the fabric so that your seams as best you can fall along the lines of the vertical struts. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around the top first, sew around the top and then sew around the bottom, pulling it taut all the time as I showed you in my first video. So I've sewn all the way around the top and all the way around the bottom keeping the fabric nice and taut and I'm going to trim off this excess fabric all the way around before I put in the lining. Being very careful not to cut the stitches while you do this. And I'm going to do the same here at the top just to neaten it off a bit. So what we're going to do now is line the shade with crushed stretch velvet. I have another video which you can refer to on the details on how to do this and I'll put a link at the bottom for that. But what I've done is I've sewn the two pieces of the velvet together I've stitched the top and now I'm going to stitch around the bottom. Now the important thing to do is to make sure that you pin it and stretch it all the way around so that you get a nice taut finish and then you're going to do a slip stitch just all the way around the bottom. So now I've stitched the lining in place around the bottom and around the top and I'm just going to cover over the stitching line using a hot glue gun and some braid. You can stitch it in if you want to, that is the more authentic way, but these days you don't really have to do that because we have so many wonderful modern adhesives, it's not really necessary. The purists, those who make lampshades and everything is hand sewn, really, really, you know, do a wonderful job. But for the purposes of an everyday lampshade that's special and you want to make yourself, you, you don't have to do that. When I first started making lampshades, everything had to be hand stitched. So I'll just continue doing this all the way around and then we'll come back to it. I put the braid around the bottom, cover the stitching lines and a little bit around the top on the inside just to neaten it off. And now I'm going to do the verticals. These lines here to cover the stitching lines. And the way to do that is to use a little lamp and put your shade on so you can see where you need to go. And then I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to use black braid to cover the stitching lines. And again, just to use the glue gun down the struts. And very carefully place the braid over the struts like so. I've now put the braiding down all the spines and the lampshade. I've put a little bit of gold around the top and a little bit of black in front of that. So it's now looking exceedingly deco, especially using this beautiful vintage kimono fabric. It's pure silk and silk crepe. It's absolutely beautiful and it will last forever. One thing I must point out when I'm making these lampshades, because they're made of fabric, please only use low wattage bulbs, cold bulbs or LED bulbs. 
So the next thing we're going to do is to attach the fringe to the bottom and then some beading. And again, place your lampshade onto your stand. It makes it a lot easier to attach the fringing. So again, using your glue gun all the way around. Making sure that you don't have a gap between your braid at the bottom of the shade and the, oh, the cover of the shade. You don't want to see the frame at all. So just keep going round and round with that until you've got all the fringe in place all the way round. So I've almost completed this lampshade. I've put a double layer of long black six inch fringing all the way around and I'm going to put some black and crystal beading on top of that. I know that really isn't what you would use in the deco period but I like to be a little bit more original. So that's the next thing. So again, put your shade on your stand and again, using your beading, attach it just to the top of the fringing all the way around. Right, I have completed the lampshade. I put a double layer of black braid over the beading just to make it really extravagant just as they would have done in the days of the Charleston and Scott Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby. Everything was very opulent and beautiful and well made. And so there we have a beautiful Art Deco lampshade. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As I say, all you need to do is to refer back to my other videos, which will give you all the instructions you need on bits that you're not sure about. Otherwise, just email me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Thank you.